What if I told you you could have gotten permanent residency a year ago, but you didn't simply because you weren't in the express entry pool? And now express entry is different. In this video, we're going to talk about when you should join the express entry pool. Can your express entry profile be updated and the six biggest mistakes that international students and work permit holders are making that are causing many of them to have to leave Canada. If you find value after watching this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to this channel. Hi, I'm Christina, a 10 year old Canadian immigrant and author of the book From Foreign Student to Canadian Citizen and Everything in Between. And I was part of the very first year of Express Entry in 2015. Now let's dive right into it. When should you enter the Express Entry Pool? Now this answer is going to be different for different people and there's no one size fits all. But one of the major things holding people back from entering the express entry pool is the language test requirements and the fact that the results for the language test expire after two years of taking the test. This brings us to mistake number one. International students and post-graduation work permit holders or open work permit holders are taking far too long to take their language tests. But now, if you take a different approach, if you just look at it from a different perspective, you can quickly eliminate this mental hiccup. Now, they just changed some of the rules for post-graduation work permit eligibility. And they said that after November 1st, if you're applying for a PGWP after November 1st, you have to have your language test. You have to have a language proficiency of a five or more in all of the language areas in either English or French. So speaking, listening, reading, writing, minimum five to be eligible for your PGWP. So in any case, you have to be taking the language test a lot sooner than many of you would have done it anyway. So this is kind of a blessing in disguise. But how about you take a different approach? Here's what I suggest. Join the express entry pool as long as you are eligible for one of the immigration programs that are under the express entry program. Understand that express entry is just a umbrella term. It's just a vestibule, right? And within express entry are three immigration programs. That is the federal skilled worker. That means you have one year work experience anywhere in the world, right? Not in Canada specifically, but anywhere in the world in a job that is in tier zero to three. So zero, one, two, three, working in a skilled job. Then there is the Canadian experience class. That is a one year skilled work experience in Canada in a tier zero or three job. Then you have the federal skilled trades worker, which is X amount of experience in a skilled trade job that is on the eligible knock list for skilled trades. So if you find yourself eligible for any one of these, I think that you should be joining the express entry pool, even if you've just graduated school, because one, you don't know if they're ever going to bring back general draws. You don't know if you're in an in-demand occupation, because I feel like if you're not in express entry, you are, you've lost awareness of where you stand. You don't have any awareness of where you stand right? So my approach that I suggest is as long as you're eligible, join the express entry pool and don't wait to take your English language test. Let's say for instance, you may have to retake the test and you foresee that happening two years in advance, or you foresee the chance of that happening two years in advance. Every month, if you save $12 and 50 cents, over two years, by the end of the two years, you'll have enough money to retake a test if it comes to that. And you just put the money in a tin, you know, those tin saving pans so you can't open one tea from. Drop your money in the tin savings pan every month. $12.50, $12.50. And at the end of the two years, if you have to retake it, you have enough money to retake the English test so that you've budgeted for it, right? But saving money to not have to take the test is not a reason to not enter the express entry pool, okay? But as you know, the language test is not the only requirement for entering the express entry pool, which brings us to mistake number two. International students, post-graduation work permit holders, or even spouse open work permit holders are taking far too long to get their educations assessed. That is their education that they had outside of Canada. It has to be assessed by a body that will give you an educational credential assessment, right? They're taking far too long to take it. And this one has a five-year validity. So there is really no reason 
to wait until the 11th hour to get this assessment done. Don't apply for it when you need it. Apply for it before you need it. You know why? Because the processing time for an ECA, Education Credential Assessment, can be two weeks to four months. I just had two people in my community who just one waited exactly four months and one waited over four months to get their ECA back, which means that in that four months, you're waiting, you're not in the pool, you could be in the pool, there were draws that happened that you may have been eligible for, but once you're not in there, you're missing out on that, okay? So you want to get get those two things out of the way and eliminate this waiting period, waiting for something magical to happen. Now, of course, if you are not eligible as a federal skill worker or Canadian experience class or federal skill trades worker, then obviously you can't enter the pool right? You have to be eligible for one of those in a right knock, in a right tier for you to enter the race. So let us say that you're still waiting on that one year experience and maybe that one year experience just so happens to be in Canada. Then it's going to make you eligible for a federal skill worker and Canadian experience class. I'd say get the language test and the education credential assessment out of the way at least six to four months before you hit the one year mark of your work experience. Why? When I was entering the experts entry pool, I tried in June. June would have been a, almost 10 months into my work experience in Canada. And the two times I tried to enter the profile in June, it was ineligible, ineligible, ineligible. So I waited. But of course, I had my English test ready. I had my education credential assessment ready. And I waited exactly for the one year anniversary of my work experience in Canada. And I joined the Express Entry Pool on a Wednesday. And by Friday, I got an invitation to apply for permanent residency. That may not be the case for everybody, but it just goes to show that timing matters and taking for granted the fact that what is happening right now in express entry is still going to be the same in a year from now or two months from now is, 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 is a flawed thinking, right? Make, take, make decisions and take action on the information that you have right now. It doesn't cost you anything to enter the express entry pool. The only costs you incur are the indirect costs of the language test and the education credential assessment, which you have to do anyway. So once you have those two things, it is free to jump into the pool and start swimming. You don't need to pay to enter. Where money comes in is if you get an invitation to apply for permanent residency. So you obviously need to be budgeting for that because that's over a thousand dollars. So avoid these two mistakes and get your two, you get these two requirements out of the way. One big question that a lot of people have is, can your express entry profile be updated? Great question, because what if you join and then something change, can you change it? And the answer is absolutely yes. And avoiding mistake number one and number two are critical for answering even that question. Because if you get these two, the English test and the ECA out of the way, you're in the pool. Yes, you can update your express entry profile. Let's say you took the French test, you know, you added that to your profile. You go in, you add that you have more language requirements. Let's say you got a different job and the job happens to be an in-demand occupation. You go in and you make that change. So this is something that is editable and it's updatable, which brings me to mistake number three, which was slightly mentioned in the previous one. Mistake number three, international students and work permit holders are waiting for this glorified one year work experience in Canada to join the express entry pool. They're waiting for me us to hit that mark in order to join the express entry pool. And like I said, if you don't meet any of the, the federal skill worker, can you experience class federal trades worker, then you have to wait. But if you're a federal skilled worker, you don't need to wait to hit that one year mark in Canada. Because what happens is when you join the pool, say for instance, you're working in Canada now, you know what happens at all like about at month 10 of you working into Canada, mm -hmm. your express entry profile updates with the points and takes into consideration your one year work experience in Canada and makes you eligible for Canadian experience class. This happened to somebody in my community who had been sitting around in the express entry pool and at month 10, then by the next day, the profile updated with the points and now he's eligible for express entry and he got an invitation to apply for permanent residency in Canada, right? By the skin of his teeth. So avoid this mistake. 
Do not wait for one year work experience in Canada to join the pool. Timing matters. And say, for instance, you're waiting for this one year and that week something happened and you can't join the pool. You got busy with life, all these things, and you can't join the pool. You could have missed out on an opportunity simply because you weren't prepared. And if you wait for this one year, wait for the one year to do the English test, wait for the one year to do the educational credential assessment, now you're waiting for one year plus all the time you're going to take to do that. Okay? Avoid mistake number three. Do not wait for this glorified one-year Canadian work experience unless you're not eligible for anything else. And while you're in the pool, you can update if you have any updates. If you combated what I'm going to talk about in mistake number four, you can go back and make updates. So what are you waiting for? But wait, there's more. Mistakes four, five, and six are so critical, especially when applied to the first two mistakes that I mentioned. If you've already gotten value from the video to this point, please smash that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, consider subscribing. Mistake number four. English speaking people take this English language test for granted and they go into the exam and they wing it. When you're taking this test, it's not even so much a test of your language proficiency. It is, especially if you're not English speaking. However, if you are English speaking, this is a test against time. Okay? And if you're brain rusty, if you have ADD, if you look on the fly upon the wall when them doing the, the, the listening exam and you miss what them say, you don't know the answer. This is something that people take for granted. They don't prepare. They go in and wing it. Yeah, I'm English speaking. Of course, I'm going to do well on an English test. Nope. This is something that you need to practice for. Practice timed exams. Practice real life exams of whichever one IELTS or CELPIP. Practice, practice, practice in order to make yourself be familiar with the exam format and familiar with the time constraints to write whatever story, to read whatever they want, to listen to the comprehension, work on your attention um, span. Mm -hmm. Because your language test can be the difference maker between a score in the 300s and a score in the 500s. Like if you got the lowest score on your language test, but you have more than three years as a federal skilled worker, you also went to school in Canada. If you just did poorly on that test, your score would be the 300s. If you aced that test, your score would be in the 500s. And guess where express entry scores are right now? In the 500s. Mm -hmm. So don't take for granted this language test. Avoid this mistake. Don't take it for granted and do well on your language test. If, for example, you took the test, you never do so hot, you got a score in the sevens, retake the test. I know it's going to cost money, but and, and you have to weigh the options for yourself as well, right? You have to go in, simulate the scores, see if this is going to be a, be a good thing or a bad thing for you, see if it's going to help you to get more points. That would be the difference maker between getting an invitation to apply. So you have to do that assessment. But a score in the sevens is not a good score. Sorry. And that's for IELTS, okay? So sell pip. So, so, so sell pip, a seven is like between pass and doing excellent. So uh, bet between 50% and 100, a bit in between score is not a good score. You want to get up near, like above the half and to the, the, to the, the maximum marks, right? The maximum marks is achievable. If you find that you didn't get it, Join the express entry pool with the points that you have. Retake the test if you find that it's going to increase your score and update the language test results in your express entry profile. Avoid it. Avoid this mistake like the plague. Remember, and these scores that I'm telling you are not fake scores. It's simulated. So I just want you to check out this express entry CRS score calculator just really quickly, right? This is something that's provided by the Canadian government. It's free just to simulate your score. And I just wanted to show you something, right? So here is a candidate who is married. They are still in the, in the good age, right? Almost good age, all okay age, right? Has studied in Canada and has their bachelor's in their own country, right? They have done a one-year program in Canada and they have at least one year work experience in Canada. 
Now here are their English language scores, right? Really good um, speaking, reading, right? Speaking and listening. The reading and writing could use some improvement, right? So I just put in exactly what this person um, situation is right now, right? Added their spouse who also has okay scores and the CRS score is 487. We haven't seen 400 in such a long time, right? Literally a year, right? For a Canadian experience or a general draw. Look what happens when I just change the reading and writing up to the maximum. Recalculate. All I do is change the primary applicant. 513 what you would give for a score in the 500 so let us say that okay maybe not ex not perfect maybe nine simulate 507 okay so this brings me back to the point of just taking that language test seriously and if you get low scores reconsider doing the test again need i say more Two of the families that I know that have had to leave Canada this year left because of mistake number five. Now, I know that money is important. When you come to Canada, especially if you're on a work permit, the per the, your prerogative is to find work, be able to contribute to the household, be able to pay for your bills. Living in Canada is expensive. I 100% get it, right? However, if you are just working in a job that is just paying the bills and is not contributing to your PR goals, you are being very counterproductive because just paying the bills will satisfy you for the time that you're here until you have to leave because you weren't strategic about that decision. I get it. You have to take the job. You have to take whatever comes because you need money in the door. And sometimes when you get that money in the door and you get that job, you get comfortable or distracted. Working in a job that is not tier zero, one, two, or three does not contribute to express entry. And if you're here on a, either post graduation work permit or you are a spouse of somebody who is currently in school and now you have a work permit now you get to work as a team and it's anybody's game at this point as to who is eligible for P um, PR first right you have to capitalize on the opportunity that you have to work not just to make money but also to contribute to your PR goals so a spouse who is here on an open work permit should be working in a tier that is eligible for express entry and that spouse can join the express entry pool if they're already a federal skilled worker and now they're adding the Canadian experience class and that spouse becomes eligible for Canadian experience class. But if you're going to take a job at, a, a, if you're going to take a job in an occupation that is a knock that is less than tier three, you are not doing the right thing for yourself. I know that the government announced that they may be bringing in tier four and five. Understand that I believe that they are going to be very strategic about the not codes that they will make eligible for express entry, if that's the case or whatever immigration program they're coming up with for tier four and five. In other provinces, at a provincial level, in the provincial nominee programs, tier four and fives are on the list, but they're only specific knocks. So if you're not in an in-demand occupation, you shouldn't be working in a tier lower than three, okay? So say, for instance, you, know, you have to get money through the door and you get a job, but it's, it's, it's at a, a coffee shop or whatever the case is that is not on the list and you have to take it, fine. If you're taking it, do not stop looking for a job in tier three or more. Go to networking events. Of course, when you're working, it's going to be difficult to do that. Go to networking events. Improve your resume. Spruce up your LinkedIn profile work with a career coach, work with a recruiter, do whatever you need to do to prioritize this goal. Because the families that I'm seeing that are dropping out of the flat, <laughs> that are dropping out of the skies, got this wrong. Okay, yeah, you made money and all that money was spent on rent and now you have to leave Canada. So you're not even leaving with some of that money. Okay, so don't get yourself into that situation. Please avoid mistake number five. So now we've gone through mistakes one, two, three, four, and five. And let's say now you've entered the express entry pool and your score not looking so hot. Or even if you 
calculated your score before you enter the pool. Remember that express entry makes you also eligible for provincial nominee program to be invited to apply for a provincial nominee. Okay. So mistake number six is the biggest mistake that I see now and that will continue going forward unless you guys educate yourself. Do not rely solely on express entry and waiting for an invitation to apply for permanent residency. Okay. Remember that when you're in the pool, it means nothing until you get an invitation to apply for permanent residency. And if you rely solely on that, you will probably get sent home or have to leave Canada. You'll probably fall out of status because you're not exploring alternative methods. And that's the biggest mistake that people are doing now and will continue to do unless they get educated. Stop relying solely on express entry. Don't take too long to pivot or don't get to a stage where you're not pivot pivoting at all, right? Understand that if you're going to pursue another route, you probably have to be looking for a job in a certain area. The employer has to get, you know, you have to be on the probationary period or whatever the case may be for some employers. And it may not be just off the bat, as soon as you get hired, ready to sign a PNP form for you or ready to do AIP for you, right? They have to get to know you to make sure that you're going to, you're going to be worth it, right? So don't wait until the end of your work permit to explore other options and don't not explore other options unless you do want to go home, which is not a bad thing. It's not the end of the world if you do have to go home, right? And I have a video on that that I can share with you soon, right? But don't rely on this method by itself. Now, I've created a masterclass to help eliminate mistake number six. In this masterclass, I cover the five strategies that you need to be aware of and get yourself in line with these strategies in order to put yourself in the best spot to get permanent residence in Canada inside this current immigration landscape. In the masterclass, I also show you how to find your NOT code, how to check your express entry score, where to find this in-demand occupation list. This is something you need to be strategic about, especially if you're a spouse here working and your, other, your spouse is in school, or especially if you're just about to enter the work world, how do you get yourself on this in-demand list, okay? If you, the link to the masterclass is in the description below. So avoid these six mistakes. Get your language test done. Get your education credential assessment done. Don't wait for one year work experience in Canada to join the express entry pool. As long as you're eligible, either as a federal skill worker or federal skills trades or Canadian experience class, you should join the pool. Don't take this language test for granted. If you're English speaking or French speaking, practice for the test. It's a race against time. Get it right and get the maximum score you possibly can. And if you don't, consider retaking the text. Your knock code matters. Mistake number five, your knock code matters. Don't spend time working in a knock code that's not eligible for express entry. And if it is not on the express entry list, at least make it in the in-demand occupations list. Make it count for something other than just paying the bills. And Mistake number six, avoid it at all costs. Don't rely solely on express entry. Consider relocating, consider other immigration programs, join the masterclass to get a full understanding of all the different options that you have so that you can make an informed and empowered decision. If this video has been at all helpful for you, please smash the like button, share it with your fellow international students and work permit holders and join the masterclass and community. Inside the community and masterclass, you'll find people who are in the same boat as you tread in the same waters and sometimes misery loves company and you just need to cheer each other along. So thanks for watching. Hit the like button, consider subscribing, share, and I will see you in the next video.